Welcome back to the reality, guys. I'm your host, Brian, and today I'm talking alone. This is season 11, episode two. Uh, opportunity cost. Uh, so we meet the uh, final five contestants. Uh, so we had our first five in episode one. We have our second five in, in episode two. And we had Sarah. She's 48. She's from Alaska. We have Jake, 42. He's from Idaho. We have Peter, 43. He's from British Columbia, Canada. We have Dusty, 35, from Arkansas. And we have Timber, 35, from Indiana. Legal name is Timothy. Um, this episode, I, I enjoyed it. I I think I liked it a lot more because we saw, I think, the tracking. There was some like tracking involved with two different types of animals. One of them a lot more serious than the other. Um, I'm going to do something a little different on this uh, review. Uh, it's not even really a review. It's more of a reaction. I need to, to make that clear. So I'm going to run by person by person by per, like person. So like my original notes, I'm writing it chronologically. And that's kind of why I think it maybe get confused. So I think just running through each person would be a lot easier for me to I want to remember things. And I just think more fluid to just talk about so i'm going to run dry the list of when we saw these people so sarah sarah was first so i said she was 40 she's from alaska um she is lives in remote alaska so i think that's important to know because i think she i think all these people obviously are going to have like some connection to like how they got here and how good they are with the land but i think when we're in alaska i would think that it maybe is similar to not like exactly the similar as the arctic circle but more comparable so uh, she actually moved from Florida to Alaska with her husband. Um, they own a fishing lodge. And uh, the one of the reasons that she wants to win this money is her husband has some health issues and they were kind of living off the land and uh, they were doing like day-to-day things to like be able to live their life. And and I think that the her husband probably couldn't help. And I think this money, and that's the thing about the show. It's like it, all the people that come on here generally pretty likable so all of them i think have great reasons for being on here um any of them winning they're gonna they're not gonna put they're not gonna fool so like spend the money all of them have like we're trying to help the community not go like buy like corvettes or crazy cars or things like that like and i think that's probably another great thing about the show is you, you can root for everybody on the show that, that's it's just fun you don't want bad things to happen to them obviously nine of them are going to lose but it's just fun to see them on the journey and you, everything they do. They're not, it's just, it's good to see that like the money they win is three, usually going to put it to a good cost or for the good reason. So um, big thing about her is she finds her fishing spot and there's a beaver there and she hears the beaver. It's like slapping its tail to like warn her. So when she originally sees the beaver, she didn't bring her bow and she's regretting this. And when she goes back to the river later or the fishing spot, she brings the bow this time and hoping to see him. And um, she does find him and she tries to take a shot on the beaver. And one of the things she takes the shot on in the water, which is risky at times because one, you could, I guess, lose the arrow. Um, if you hit it, like what she did, because she thought she hit it because the arrow was stuck in the, in the water and it wasn't moving. So she thought she like pinned it to something. And um, basically she had to go into the water. She didn't like get completely naked, but she did go in there and, We'll have to see how next episode, if this impacts anything, because um, if she's going to like get really cold or be able to rebound from this, like dry her clothes off. Luckily, this is like pretty early in the show, so I think she can rebound from it, from it, but we'll have to see how that goes. And like, again, like seeing such a good animal for like food and the, all the resources you can use from it, how is mentally she going to be able to handle that she didn't get it? So we'll have to see about that. Um, she, for her shelter, she's building a wiki up. I think I'm saying that correctly, but um, that for her personal, I think permanent shelter. And this is, she selected a location and I think it is close to the fishing spot. So I had nothing bad to say about her uh, so far. And obviously I don't know really anything about survival tactics. So my opinion doesn't really mean much, but like, do I, I think I could see her winning. Um, she's not somebody that I, I could see it, but so far, so good. So we have Jake for two. He's from Idaho. He's a professional falconer for 15 years. So I thought that was kind of cool because he he was talking about he I think he saw a peregrine falcon in the air and he was talking about like, oh, like they fl- like they pop the graphics 200 miles per hour flying. And he's like saying like, oh, in a couple of weeks, they'll be down in Mexico or South America or something like that. And I was like, man, this guy knows a lot just by looking at that bird and then like pop into his job. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So we find a little bit about, about his backstory. Um, he had to sell his business 
to like i think be closer to his kids like in the divorce so he lost like he was given up three-fourths of his income so that's unfortunate so obviously the money he's going to use for that another good lo- logical reason and um wishing him the best but he uh big thing about him is he lost his fishing line while he was moving through the forest and he's been looking for it for three days and he feels dumb about it. And like, one of the things is like, he didn't bring like a ferro rod or he was saying like, I can get, I can make fire in any moment or at any place. And then he also says like, I can fish anywhere. So like that fishing line was probably big for him. So he ends up constructing a gill net and popping that in. And he also, another cool thing that I, I always love when these, and it's, it seems to be every season, these, these people just come up with these awesome ideas to like make stuff and, just like the things they construct to like hold the things they make. And I just always think it's really cool. So he made some charcoal and he made like a container out of it and like kind of explained it with like the, the bark he was using and like the little, um, I don't, it wasn't thread, but whatever he used to like make the handle thought that was really cool. He also sees a beaver and he uses um, a branch to bait it in and was waiting for it to make the rounds and never comes back. So beaver action. I don't remember beavers being, prevalent in any other season so that is i'm interested to see because we do i think we do see someone hit him with hitting a beaver on the head so i'm interested in that uh peter 43 he's from british uh columbia canada 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 like i said he's a librarian so a lot of his knowledge that he learned from reading books and i think he's all he also said he's like a volunteer rescue um services black belt and jiu-jitsu that's super cool um he his first like objective um, is to boil water and he boils it on day two. Cause he, I guess he hadn't had any and um, he's worried about um, dehydration and uh, he has trouble in the beginning getting a fire going. He eventually does get it. Um, he does name a pond near his shelter teapot pond based after his son. I guess there was like an inside joke or something um, like i guess i don't remember the technical term was but the glacier over making little ponds or buys of water but yeah he names the teapot pond after son um he said he had a rough first day and um I, I, that worries me a little bit if he's if he was second guessing himself a lot on the first day I, I just hope that doesn't like become a theme for him moving forward um, he does find some bear poop. He's a little old, but he did say that was pretty big, so that's something to keep an eye on. Um, he's building like a dome shelter, and it's based off of um, Quil- 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 Rick. Butchering that, I'm sure, but Q Q word. They popped it. They did pop it up on the screen. So if you did watch the episode, it was there. Just um, not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but yeah. And this is going to be his um, permanent shelter for the area. So interested to see how that goes i don't remember i think oh no and it is gonna be his permanent shelter and he said like he was suddenly based off of like the people in the area like in the old days making their shelter so i thought that was actually kind of cool too so um we had dusty dusty was the next one he's 35 from arkansas he's a welder um he is working on his shelter first uh he was eating a lot of berries um uh, gathering them as well keeping them for himself obviously that's not a bad strategy we've seen it in the past um, he does get a squirrel with a bow, and um, uh, I think a little little bit of success with the the bow hunting so far, and some also some would have been like some great success by the next person. But yeah, I, I didn't I didn't really find like does does he definitely interesting, but we didn't really I, I didn't think like his his stuff was that prevalent prevalent to me. I didn't think like he went through like super hardships, um, and like. Uh, unlike the next person and, and the next person i thought was pretty big um like i said the last person tipper 35 is from indiana um living named timothy yeah he grew up off the grid and um he him and his wife work in humanitarian aid and, and like he i guess travels a lot and his and with his family and he wants to like use the money to build a house and have like a permanent uh living location in u.s um but he also got a squirrel with his belt. Like I was saying, there's a lot of luck come squirrel, squirrel kills. He uses that squirrel. Um, he like did, so he has this tattoo. I'm going to pop a picture up. Like, I think it, it, he was facing us. This was, I think it was his right arm, but I could be wrong. But on his arm, he has these like teeth, like animal teeth. 
And he says tradition where he takes the blood of that animal, rubs it in the teeth, and he says he's feeding the beast. Um, he made a temporary shelter. So I think like he's focusing right now on the food that he's catching. Um, he does get a fish from his squirrel bait. He uses the bait in the water to catch fish. And he was eating everything. He caught. He ate everything he caught that day. So he ate the squirrel. He ate the um, the fish. And um, he also was doing some super cool stuff. Like I, I just thought they highlighted him for a reason. He was just doing really cool things. Um, he made. Um, he's gonna use his arrow quiver as like his water storage, and I think he, I think they said like four quarts in there. I think is what he can store. And he's gonna make another quiver out of like his armband for the for the 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 bow. And he tested it out. Looked really cool. He threw me out there, and they're like, try to make up something. I would never be able to do this. This is, this is there's a reason why these people are on the show. I just I, I find it impressive. So I'm watching the show. I'm, I'm impressed with a lot of the things, a lot of the problem solving, the the critical thinking. I just I find it very impressive. So he finds some fresh moose tracks and. We did see this in the preview for the season and also like the end of episode one, I think. And he sees some fresh moose tracks. He sees a bull moose starts to get pretty close. He's doing like down 500 meters away, 300 meters away. Does a moose call. Moose stands up, starts walking away, but he does it again. Moose comes back. He calls this the hunt of his lifetime. And so I, he had the pee, he didn't he had the camera kind of facing up towards him, but there was a shot where you could see actually how close it was pretty close. Um and he ended up getting two shots off. He the first one I thought he hit because it looked like the way the way it was on the camera, I like I think it was almost like the, the angle was it wasn't straight on, like for the viewer, it wasn't straight on, it was like on an angle a little bit. And he I thought he hit it. I really did. I really thought he hit it. And um, it ran like into like some like brush, I think a little bit. And he goes in for a second shot and he missed. And he said that there was like a twig or something hanging out like 10 feet from the moose. And it like deflected the air or something like that. And he missed it. And this is, I was really hoping to get it because I thought that'd be really cool. Especially like first time we see him, hey, like getting big, big game kill. I, I thought that was really cool. And it was just, fun. honestly, it was fun to watch. I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was like, the perspective was cool when as the moose was getting closer he was like mouthing like the how many yards away it is and i i, I thought it was awesome uh, i thought it was really cool fun to watch and just we haven't had something <laughs> I, since that i think it was season eight where they had to do 100 days and he kills like the the yak or the muskox or something i don't remember what exactly what it was with the knife and just like that stuff's awesome and i'm the only thing i will say about this is i'm worried that how will this affect him mentally because he was like so close so like right there like that was his like golden ticket he kept referring to so hopefully it doesn't impact him uh, mentally because i mean that was an awesome that was an awesome first appearance uh to watch him just do everything he did i, I thought it was great fun to watch but um yeah so far i i would probably lean he, he i mean the leaders in the clubhouse would probably be like him. so far what we've seen i mean anything can happen but i thought i found it impressive so We'll see how episode three goes. Uh, so far, so good. Enjoying the season. This is probably one of my favorite shows to watch. Just like I say, always so different compared to everything else we cover. But yeah, I'll be back next week for episode three. And if you have any interest in any of the other things we uh, cover over here, check it out. But um, until then, I'll talk to you in the next video. See ya.